What's up guys and welcome to the weekly Q&A. Real quick, we have a giveaway at the end of this video thanks to some fans at Star Wars Celebration, so make sure you stay to the end for that. Our first question comes from Kevin Dragos who asks what we think of the Emperor coming back in Episode 9 because Alex didn't like his resurrections in Legends. Yeah, I was not a fan of the Emperor in Dark Empire. He like had clones of his body and he kept doing the old uh, essence transfer and just passing his consciousness from body to body. I don't like the idea of the Emperor surviving because I think it diminishes Anakin's uh, redemption mm -hmm. and his sacrifice. So yeah, I am very optimistic, I'll say, that they're going to handle this correctly. I think that he is dead. I think Palpatine is still dead. I think there are a couple of ways that this can be handled. And honestly, so many people asked about this that I'm going to do a separate video on it. But right now, I'm, you, you know me, I'm cautiously optimistic. <laughs> I think that they're probably going to keep him dead, but he will still be an influential presence because we say this so many times. He has plans on plans on plans. Yeah. This one just took 30 years to kick in or something. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Um, I... I was surprised, but it makes sense, kind of, too, to, 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 like, wrap everything up, bring it back to, you know, the original Big Bad. Um, but, yeah, when, when rumors were going around about Palpatine being in Nine, I was like, what? How? Yeah, like, is he going to be... Is he the big villain of the film? I mean, it kind of seems like he might be. I think even interviews with Kathleen Kennedy suggested as much, so... It'll be interesting to see how he's implemented, uh, and I don't know. It, it might be something that I am not a fan of yeah. uh, in the end, but well, we'll see. We know he can't be a f like a true force ghost because right. that's a light side thing. He could just be like a regular ghost. I, I think haunting. I think if he were some sort of malevolent presence stuck in the Death Star, like if his death created some sort of dark side nexus where. He's kind of there, but he can mm -hmm. just, he's stuck in that one place, which is something we have seen in written material. Um, but no, I don't want him to be resurrected. I definitely don't want him to be cloned or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, that seems like too much to put into one movie. Yeah. But if they were to venture into the Death Star and be affected by him, or if they found one of his old holocrons or something like that, there are ways that it can work. We just have to see. Yeah. Christian Morales wants to know our thoughts on Skywalker being a title and not just a last name. We answered this in yesterday's big celebration Q&A, but people keep asking it, and I feel like we're going to talk about it a long time coming. Yeah. So let's touch on it again. Until December. Yeah. And then probably after, <laughs> it, if that turns out to be the case. But yeah, this is something that we speculated on in... Uh, our original just kind of off-the-cuff breakdown of episode 9. And yeah, I'm very into the idea. I think it's a great idea. I am too. Like either that or just her adopting the name Skywalker and like, I don't, I don't know. It could also allude to the redemption of Kylo Ren, but I, I like the idea of that being the title of the new Jedi. Yeah, what I love about it is that now we have like a three act story where the prequels are the creation of the Skywalker line, at least in the, you know, Anakin being born literally of the force. And then, of course, his fall. The original trilogy is about the redemption of the Skywalker line. And then the sequel trilogy is about its legacy. And I love that the idea, at least, that the Skywalker Knights or the Skywalker Order or just the Skywalkers, whatever they call it it means that the Skywalker family made a huge impact on the galaxy for maybe thousands of years to come. So mm -hmm. we could, the next big saga films could jump a thousand years into the future. And yeah, now we have the Skywalker Knights and it's like, oh, it's nice to still feel their presence a little bit. Yeah, you could have, you could, maybe the Knights of Ren become the new, army of bad guys and you've got the knights of ren versus the knights of skywalker yeah maybe david harper jr asks what we're more excited for right now the mandalorian or fallen order i'm more excited for fallen order honestly i feel like that's the unpopular opinion but 
I really liked what we saw of the game. I liked what little they said about the gameplay. Uh, I'm just excited to have a new single-player story-driven Star Wars game. It's been way too long. I want one. Yeah. I, I am excited for Fallen Order as for the same reasons, because of the story and everything and all the new canon stuff that will be in it. But I'm going to go Mandalorian because I love my TV shows. <laughs> I mean, I think that is the more popular choice because... It's brand new. We've never had a Star Wars TV show. We've had single player story driven Star Wars games before. We've and never had a TV show just, like or a live action TV show. Yeah, I'm just not a super involved video game player. I will play the games, especially if it's involved Star Wars. But, you know, I, I'll sit and watch binge watch TV shows for, for days. So I guess I will say, though, that I think I'll probably experience the Mandalorian more than Fallen Order in the end. I don't replay a ton of games unless they really blow me away. Uh, so it, maybe it'll really blow me away. Fingers crossed. Uh, but, you know, Mandalorian is something that you can just sit and enjoy and not think about. So mm -hmm. we do like to rewatch our TV shows. <laughs> <laughs> Alden Diaz, great to meet you, by the way. We saw him at Celebration. Yeah. Uh, wants to know which Star Wars creator we'd like to see try new mediums the same way Dave Filoni is directing in live action now. Uh, he mentioned Claudia Gray doing a screenplay, and I'd be very into that. I just saw someone tweet about that, that, that she needs to get into mm -hmm. that. Uh, I'm going to go Charles Soule writing a novel. I love his work in comics. I have read his uh, non-Star Wars novel, The Oracle Year, and I thought that was really interesting and cool. Uh, just a kind of sci-fi concept. So yeah, I think he would do really well with a novel, and maybe he'll get to in Project Luminous, or maybe that'll be a comic story. I don't know how that's going to work out. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, he's the first name that came to my mind. Um... I'll go Timothy Zahn, maybe getting involved, more involved in a TV show about the Imperials. Yeah. Something like that. He really likes Imperial culture, so I think he could do well with that. Yeah. 501st, the show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, as someone that he, he's responsible for the 501st coming into storytelling. So yeah, that, that would be a pretty cool thing for him to handle. Mm-hmm. Young Nasty Man asks what? <laughs> well, you put a lot of flavor on that, read. <laughs> I mean, how can I not? <laughs> Young Nasty Man asks what Disney Plus series we would pitch, and Alex can't say Bigs. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm still going to kind of... He's still going to say No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to say like an X-Wing. X-Wing pilot. <laughs> yeah. I w no Bigs. It won't be Bigs, because I would rather it be like the X-Wing Legends books. And Biggs is dead. But his cousin well, Gavin isn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've had a, a handsome, charming, dark-haired, mustached pilot. We've got the blonde Biggs, which is General uh, Merrick. All that's left is a ginger. A ginger to jump into mustache squadron. General Ginger <laughs> flying around in his X-Wing. <laughs> but, I mean, seriously, I would love like an X-Wing series. I think that those books would translate very well into uh, seasons of shows. Yeah. And early on, when we were talking about what we thought might be coming to, to Disney+, Plus, I said, I want to see more bounty hunters. And it sounds like we're going to get that in The Mandalorian. So I guess I'll say uh, more of like the crime syndicates. We got a little taste of that in Solo with uh, Crimson Dawn, so it'd be cool to see more of them. Uh, we have said before that we'd really love a continuation of some of the ideas in Solo. Yeah, like uh, yeah. like a sequel to Solo, but maybe in TV form. Sure, I'm totally down for that. That's it for patron questions. If you're a patron and you didn't see your question answered here, just head over to Patreon where we left you a written response. If you're not a patron, you can learn more by following the link in the description. Just a dollar a month will get you access to extra Star Wars explained content like audio commentaries for the movies. And we're also doing audio commentaries for the Clone Wars right now. And this week's episode is Holocron Heist. So you can check that out right now if you're interested. Now, normally we would do a big collab Q&A. When we go to conventions, we try to meet up with our friends and other creators and we ask them questions and we totally plan to do that and nobody had time to follow through. We so, did not stop moving the entire time. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that. We do have some collabs uh, coming in the future with some of our friends, but 
Uh, this is just going to be a standard Q&A, so take it away. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, on to YouTube questions. Blacinda asks if we think the voices or visions Kylo Ren experiences from Vader's helmet is actually Palpatine. So when I read that, I kind of, I like, I went back a little. You're was like, like, oh. Whoa. You're like, whoa. 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 <laughs> I think that's actually a really good idea. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it would be a solid way to, I don't know, uh, make it seem like this has been set up this whole time. Mm hmm. And, and we, we, I mean, we they... got we got Momin. Is that is that his name? Yeah, from the comics. He lived in a helmet, right? So we we know that helmets can be possessed. <laughs> Palpatine can live in a helmet. Sure, and I mean, he shocked Vader as he was like dying. I feel like there's enough force connection there that it could happen. Uh, so yeah, I think that's a pretty cool idea. Yeah, and we've heard of like helmets and arm armor and things like that being like possessed they've honestly talked about that a lot caused uh, like, caused people to be possessed so yeah i'm i'm down with that yeah i mean they they mentioned that in aftermath the trilogy of a handful of times that masks have this power they can be corrupting we've seen it with moman's helmet like i i don't hate that idea at all in fact i like it <laughs> Leader McFly wants to know what we think the Resistance needs from the Death Star. What I don't do they, know. What do they need? Like, yeah, they're they're going to, they at least see the Death Star. We don't know that they're going to go into it. They're just like, hey, look at that. But why else would they be there? <laughs> and the, that would be hilarious. We're like, wow, look at all oh, that. Check out that. Look at all that. <laughs> anyway. Let's go that way. <laughs> I mean, the, the Force Awakens Art of book showed the idea that they would be exploring it. I think it's probably pretty likely that they're revisiting that idea for episode nine and i think it's a great idea no clue why yeah i this is not an original idea from my brain i, I think i saw this in someone else's trailer breakdown but someone said that that scene of them looking out at the death star uh ruins might be earlier on in the film because they all look a little bit cleaner and, I mean, she's got the lightsaber, but someone mentioned that maybe they need a kyber crystal to f to fully fix their broken lightsaber, and maybe they, they go fishing for one. All right. And then maybe that unlocks Palpatine in a way. Mm -hmm. Like, no, those are mine. <laughs> he had just a collection of crystals sitting around. I mean, like, I could see him doing that, have a vault and... I'm sure he has something valuable in the yeah. Death Star. Or to piggyback off of the haunted helmet idea, like maybe there's a holocron or something in the ruins of the Death Star where they're like, maybe this will counteract and kind of make Kylo snap out of it. Yeah, could be. There, there's could, There could be a lot of stuff down yeah. there. I have nothing solid for you, but I'm sure it's cool. <laughs> Ben Brady asks if we think the Death Star could be a dark side nexus like the cave on Dagobah. Yes. I, I think mean, that's potential as well. I Yeah. If, if it's, especially if it's haunted by Palpatine, like that's going to be a spooky place. Yeah. And like like we kind of said, if he died there, I mean, he had that crazy weird explosion, mm -hmm. whether that was from something he hit down in the pit or if... That was an explosion of the force. Who knows? Like, I, I could see him being stuck there, haunting it in some way. Yeah. I I don't know how they're going to handle that. I'm, I'm assuming the way that the wreckage looks, that there'll be enough of it to explore out of the water. Because, I, I mean, there's only so much you can do underwater, dialogue-wise. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. So... LNP wants to know why Anakin's Force Ghost never told Ben to stop worshipping him as a bad guy. <laughs> I think the simple answer here is that we don't know how Force Ghosts work. Yeah. We've only seen him a handful of times. I imagine that Kylo would have to be receptive to it. Mm -hmm. I don't think Anakin can just appear to whoever he wants to appear to. That's how my mind is rationalizing it at least. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, he he did 
become a force ghost, but he also did a bunch of really crappy things right before that. So maybe he has some special rules <laughs> and he's like in force ghost jail oh. and he's not allowed to really, you know, contact people. He only gets like one call a year. Yeah. <laughs> He's on everyone's block list. And he wastes it on, like, Padme's grave. <laughs> Shifty asks if the ship scene in the behind-the-scenes reel at the episode 9 panel could be the, the Tanta B4 because it was supposedly destroyed. So I don't think they streamed this to people, but there was, like, an intro reel. It was mostly recapping uh, stuff from the originals and prequels, and it was, like, a bunch of behind-the-scenes clips. But at the end, there was a shot of what looked like the Tanta V4 in episode nine. And I think that's probably supposed to be the Tanta V4. Um, as for its supposed destruction, it definitely was in Legends. And then they kind of alluded to that in the recent uh, Scum and Villainy book. But they said that it was just like an announcement from Palpatine. Mm. He's like... They all died, and that wasn't oh, my best. There it is. It wasn't my best. <laughs> I'm a little disappointed. I went for it, though. He, he announced that they had all died and the ship was destroyed, but that doesn't have to necessarily be the truth. Yeah. He's he's known for not being the most truthful. Yeah. He, he, no one trusts Palpatine, really. Right. No one that's seen the movies. I, I really like the idea of it being the Tanta V4 because it could be where they need to go to get C-3PO's memories, because that's where he was wiped. Yeah, I also just like the idea that the Tanta V would still be around because it's kind of where it all started. I mean, it literally mm -hmm. is where it all started. It's yep. the very first ship we ever see, and we get to revisit it. Yeah. As for this potential contradiction in canon, I'm okay with it. You gotta, the films have to come first. Like, there's so many reference books, and they throw out so many little details that are fun to read about, but sometimes they're gonna be overwritten by story material. Yeah. And, like, future versions of the book can be fixed. Especially if it's something involving Leia's character. Like, when she unfortunately passed, when Carrie Fisher unfortunately passed away, they had to work around that create a little bit of story uh, change there. Maybe they had to work the Tanta V4 in there for some reason because of her. Yeah. I always think there should be a little bit of flexibility when it comes to canon. It's super awesome and exciting when those little details all line up, but sometimes they're not going to, and you just have to roll with that. Yeah. That's all the time we have for questions today, so now we're going to get into the giveaway, and this is all thanks to... Two of our fans, uh, Miguel Perez and Mercedes Rodriguez, they found us at Star Wars Celebration, and they gave us uh, this. I'm holding it backwards and upside <laughs> down. This is the Celebration-exclusive copy of Master and Apprentice, and they also gave us a signed uh, Ahsoka Funko Pop, signed by Ashley Eckstein. So this is just huge yeah i mean <laughs> they were so cool and so nice to give us these things but they said that they loved how cool we were with the fans and the viewers and they were, were like we're gonna give this stuff for you to give away and of course i wanted to keep this but i'm happy to give it away <laughs> we're gonna do it for you guys because because yes. <laughs> that's what you wanted and uh i'm also gonna throw in this little bigs pin uh this was the only bigs merchandise that was exclusive to celebration this year and i didn't even know how to get it i had two fans uh come up and give me this pin and i hugged them both um <laughs> i kept one obviously but i will give away the other one uh so there's a link in the description to enter that giveaway uh but that's it yeah. so if you want to leave a question for next week's q a just put it in the comments below or sign up for our weekly patreon q a discussion if you haven't already, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And as always, thanks for watching, and may the Force be with you.